Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience, and welcome to the webinar titled Live Demo, Oracle Lab Pass for Phase 1 Clinic Automation, presented by Biofarm Systems, Vice President of Clinical Trial Management Solutions, Padam Singh, and Oracle's Senior Sales Consultant, Ed Daugherty. I'm Eugene Stefanoff, the Marketing Manager at Biofarm, and I will be going over some housekeeping items before I turn it over to Padam and Ed. During the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode. However, you may submit questions to the speakers at any time today by typing them in the chat feature located on the left side of your screen. Please note that other webinar participants will not see your questions or comments. Nonetheless, your questions to the speakers will be addressed as time allows towards the end of the presentation. If you still have unanswered questions after the webinar, or would like to request additional information from Biofarm or Oracle, feel free to visit the company's website for contact information. As a reminder, today's webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on Biofarm's website within 24 hours. We will also be emailing you a link to the recording. This concludes our housekeeping items. I would now like to turn the call over to Putnam and Ed. Thank you, Eugene. Welcome, everyone, um, to today's uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to do a overview of Oracle's uh, LabPass solution, which is Phase One Clinical Automation System. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, um, Oracle uh, Ed Doherty from Oracle joining us as well uh, in co-presenting this, and, and uh, we'll be providing a live demonstration of of the solution as well today. So let me, let me start out by introducing myself, um, and um, uh, my name is Param Singh. I'm the Vice President of the Clinical Trial Management Solution Practice at Biofarm Systems. Uh, I've been working in the industry since uh, 1999, um, and ex almost exclusively been working with CTMS Solutions during that time. Um, before joining Biofarm uh, about f five years ago, I was part of Accenture's Pharma R&D practice and leading CTMS implementations there as well. Um, so overall, been part of now uh, over 20, 25 projects uh, related to CTMS implementations and, and integrations. Um, and these vary from implementations of, you know, for pharma, CROs, medical device companies, and, and range anywhere from local implementations to global implementations of, of uh, um, you know, large-scale implementations of, of CTMS. And uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn uh, it over to Ed for, uh, for him to introduce himself. Thank you, Param. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ed Doherty. I'm a senior sales consultant with the Oracle Health Sciences Business Unit. And I'll, as Param had said, I'll be doing the, the live presentation today. Uh, just briefly about my background, I, I've been with uh, Oracle for the last four years in the Health Sciences GBU. Uh, been in the industry around the areas of clinical development for the past 17 years. Uh, prior to joining the organization, I was with uh, Metadata, Metadata Solutions, uh, implementing their, their software around EDC. Uh, so I look forward to giving you uh, an overview of the presentation today. Thanks, Ed. So uh, now that we've introduced ourselves, I just want to take a minute just to talk about my team here at Biofarm and explain a little bit more about what we do. Um, we provide a, a, a variety of services and, and products related to, to clinical trial management. Uh, we manage implementations of, of Siebel Clinical, whether those are custom implementations or implementations of our Siebel Clinical Accelerator Ascend, as well as implementations of, of Oracle Health Sciences Lab Paths. Uh, which is, again, Oracle's Phase 1 uh, clinical automation system, which we're going to be discussing today. Also, if you've seen some of our previous webinars, you know that we do extensive work in, uh, with integrations uh, with Siebel Clinical or LabPass and, and related systems. Um, our approach to, to system implementations as a whole across all of our, our suite of applications is, is very uh, process-focused. Uh, we also provide process consulting services to help organizations define and harmonize their SOPs and, and business processes across their organization with respect to clinical trial management. Uh, and we also offer uh, comprehensive training services and products 
related to, to Siebel Clinical RSN solution, as well as uh, the Lab Pass solution as well. So that's just a, a glimpse of, of some of the services and products that we offer in the space. And again, for more information, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to us. So um, let's go over today's agenda. Um, first, we're, we're going to go into a short uh, overview of, of LabPass. Um, what exactly is LabPass? Uh, what is it meant for? Uh, and what it can help your organization do? Um, next, you know, who needs LabPass? Which organizations can, can really benefit from the LabPass application and what it has to offer? And, and why choose LabPass? How can your, your organization benefit by using LabPass, and, and you know, what is the, the value proposition? And then we'll spend most of the webinar with, with Ed with, uh, from Oracle in a live demonstration of the actual application. So we're going to cover off the, the first pieces pretty quickly, so we allow for a, um, a decent amount of time to, to give um, uh, a nice detailed demo of, of, of the LabPass solution. And then we'll have uh, 10 minutes or so uh, to wrap up and with a Q&A session. Again, before we get started, I just want to, again, point out um, that everyone is in, uh, like Eugene mentioned, listen mode. Um, so everyone else is on mute. So if you do have a question or, or, um, or have an issue, uh, you know, please feel free to use the chat feature on your screen. Uh, you can submit questions or any issues that you have, um, and those will come directly to us. And we'll address any issues uh, immediately and any, any questions re re regarding the topic uh, during our Q&A session. And I also want to remind everyone that, that we are recording this presentation, and it's going to be posted on our website afterwards. So with that, we'll get started. So first, what is LabPass? Well, LabPass is a solution that is part of Oracle's Health Sciences suite of life science applications um, that helps organizations meet the needs of, of early phase, phase one, you know, clinical research. Uh, it's a sophisticated phase one clinic automation system uh, that enables organizations to re recruit study volunteers quickly, capture study data as e-source with real-time e edit checks, uh, and shares real-time data with sponsors and investigators. So by using LabPass in, in Phase one clinics, uh, organizations have achieved shortened recruitment timelines, increased data integrity, and improved the compliance in a highly aggressive and fast-paced world of, of Phase one clinical research. So early phase study protocols can, in, can change very quickly. Um, and organizations that run multiple phase one clinical trials need a solution that can, mod that, that, that can modify study setup, modify the schedule, and do barcode label changes very quickly and in real time. So due to all these factors, organizations need a solution that can help reduce costs, increase efficiency, improve compliance, and gain a, a competitive advantage. And LabPass can enable organizations such as independent phase one clinics, CROs with phase one clinics, um, academic research organizations, and sponsor companies streamline their entire process of early phase clinical research and address the challenges that, are, that they, fa they face when running multiple studies simultaneously. So why should organizations choose LabPass? Well, LabPass is designed to reduce errors by using direct e-source data capture, um, combined with real-time edit checks and alerts. And so compared to, to competitors, LabPass offers uh, a greater security of data. Uh, it's scalable as your business grows, and, and, it, and it can also support multi-clinic organizations. Uh, LabPass is also delivered via the, the Oracle Health Science Cloud. Um, and it's, it's one of the, the only SaaS-based hosted phase one clinical automation systems in the industry. We, we would have liked to, to discuss some of the, um, uh, the overview or, or, or trends of the phase one industry and some recent challenges facing the space and, and how LabPass addresses those specific challenges and gives strategic advantages to those organizations um, in a little bit more detail, but with, with the limited time, um, 
we wanted to allow most of the time for for the live demo, and I think um, you know uh, that's what uh, uh, our, our, uh, is, is going to be the most benefit for the webinar. So we're going to we're going to um, cover the demo next. But Ed and I did deliver a a presentation on uh, automating Phase One trials at the Oracle Health Science User Group Conference this year. Uh, that, that covers all of that, sort of the overview of the Phase One industry, some of the challenges in, in recent years, uh, and how a lab pass will address those challenges. So if you uh, are interested in, in that presentation, we can certainly share that with you. Um, but again, we wanted to, to leave most of the time today for, for, the, um, uh, for the demo. So if you are interested, uh, please send us an email, and we, we can be sure to, to send that presentation to you. In any case, with that sort of quick introduction, um, I, I do want to mention that, that many organizations have already evaluated and, and selected LabPass as their solution. Uh, and now we, we invite you to view and, and evaluate the functionality that, that LabPass has to offer uh, in this high-level demo. So with that, I'll, I'll, turn it over to, I'll turn it over to Ed. Thanks, Bram. So just uh, one second here. Bram, just uh, from a housekeeping perspective, do you see my screen now for LabPass? I do. And, and for those of you that are that are viewing, there's also a full screen option. There should be a full screen button that you can click and um, and, and make it full screen. Okay. Thank you. So, so what I'm going to do today is, you know, obviously we have limited time in terms of, you know, how much the webinar is scheduled for, but. As Param had mentioned, LabPass is a, it's a full enterprise solution for your Phase One clinic. So it covers everything from recruiting to direct data capture on the clinic floor to sample management workflow to data management. So it's a lot. I mean, it's a full enterprise system. But what we want to do today is just give you a high overview of a full full flow and just show how the a volunteer can go through the, from being recruited through screening to some direct data capture and. And that will really take up most of the time over the next 30 minutes. So for everyone on the call, LabPass, again, it's a full enterprise system. It's designed for the tablet. Uh, it works, you know, logically with the tablet, has medical device integrations throughout, um, barcode labeling, all that. So everything that's controlled with LabPass is over here on the left-hand side. These are all the multiple functions that you get with the LabPass system. Obviously, it's all role-based, so if you're, you know, you're a certain role within the clinic, you may only be doing recruiting, so you're just focusing in on this area. And then across the top here, you see really comparable to Internet bookmarks, and they're just one-click uh, snapshots where you can click and go directly onto the screen that you'd like. That allows you to have a configurable, you know, when you log into a lab pass, you see exactly what you want to see based on your role within, within, the, uh, within the clinic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with volunteer lookup, and I'm going to go through the recruiting side first. I'm going to take a volunteer. We're going to pick somebody. We're going to then uh, schedule them for a call from the call center, and then we're going to screen them. So if I go to volunteer lookup here, as you all know, you you know you, you're dealing you could be potentially dealing with volunteer databases that you know have thousands of volunteers, and you're you're constantly getting new protocols from sponsors indicating and they're getting you know one of the trends and obviously we don't have the time to go into much detail but one of the trends we're seeing is the phase one requirements are getting more and more complex not not are they still just in the past where they were strictly volu healthy volunteers we're seeing more of a of a push in the market to including uh, volunteer healthy and patient volunteers into phase one trials what this volunteer lookup allows you to do is to go quickly go into the system and query any way that you, you need to query against the data. So in this case, maybe I just want to bring back males for this particular study. And you'll see that it gets reduced. And then maybe I want to bring back more around certain medical conditions here. Maybe you have diabetes, something to that, to that point, and apply. And, and then you can begin to check to see who within your particular protocol in your volunteer database male diabetic, and then you can go in and you can schedule them for a call.
So we've scheduled Michael Baldwin here. I'm just going to hit save. And then you go over here onto the recruiting section and you go to the outgoing calls. And the outgoing calls and the incoming calls work basically the same way. So we support both processes in, in the call center. If I go to outgoing calls and you'll see that Michael Baldwin is here for recruitment. And it's not just recruitment. It could be notifications. It could be please come back in for additional safety labs. It could be a cancelization of, of, a, of a volunteer. All that's supported in the, in the call type list. So you'll see that across the top here, it's just a series of tabs that you logically need to go through and answer. So there's, go there's going to be required fields that need to be captured. Now this is brought in, we, we know this information already about Michael Baldwin since he was in our database. You can also see at the top here, all the call scripting can be set up within LabPass specific specifically for your, rec your recruiters. What do they need to ask on this screen? What do they need to ask, ask on the surgical screen? Have you had any surgery? Yes. You know, what type of surgery? Supports drop-down lists within it, so maybe they've had an appendectomy. So in 2002, not a good start of the year for them, but they've had, you know, they've had that surgical procedure. Now you've captured that information in LabPath. And you, you continuously, logically go through this process uh, across the tabs, picking as much information as you need to, to capture. The additional demographics allows for robust, so you can capture as many demographical information about a volunteer that your sponsor requires. So we just recently did a, uh, worked with a client who provided us with a, almost a page of additional demographics. They wanted to make sure that we could capture all that information about that volunteer, and all that can be done in this additional demographic tab. And that leads you over to the study questions area, and this is where the recruiter now will take a look at what is out there, what studies are out there, and what, what could they potentially be qualified for. So right now, this, they're going to go in and they potentially could be part of this Q study here. And as you can see, there's, there's two study parts for this, patient and healthy. Again, that'll go back to what that allows you to do is have very deep, uh, different inclusion exclusion criteria based on the study part. So for patient populations within phase one, they're going to have different inclusion exclusion than healthy volunteers. All that is part of the system. And then you can go through and actually select. And if, now, if they failed, you would know that up here. LabPass doesn't stop because there's going to be, you know, obviously, a lot of times in phase one, you could potentially be qualified for the study. We leave that up to the, to the individuals within the clinic to decide whether they want to continue them or they want to fail them out. At this point, we're just getting them scheduled up for screening. And then you see that there's different appointments that they could be part of. And then, you know, again, detailed instructions around around that. And then, and then you just hit done. Now, now Michael Baldwin is set to come in for screening for this particular study. The incoming calls work basically the same way. So, if you come into incoming calls, you start a new call. Start a new call. You can go in and you could say um, select, you know, the first letter within the person's name. What lab, what lab pass will do is go out and search the database. So, you know, we'll get questions from clients. Well, I want to make sure I don't enter duplicate volunteers. Lab pass will search the database, go through those thousands of volunteers, bring back any potential duplicates that could be there so that you know. So, you know, then, then you can select that person and then begin going through the same process across the top here. You'll see that if there's any medical information, search. Surgical information, all that can be collected in here, and then you'd select them for the studies. So it works basically the same. The same process is is done both outgoing and incoming. And what Volunteer Lookup allows you to do is to rapidly subset your volunteer population based on specific protocol requirements. 
and it allows you to query at a very detailed level. So you could potentially have three or four statements or statements or and statements that you want to combine together to get a subset of volunteers that you want to bring back for your, for your study. So I'm going to just end this call for this just to show you how, I just want to show you how the incoming and outgoing work. And now I'm going to go over to screening. And what screening does is it allows you to go in now and take a look at volunteers. So I'm going to just jump to this volunteer here. And you'll see that it allows you to, this is me, so I'll just see who is behind the call here. Um, it allows you to put Specific volunteer pictures into into lab pass and then it allows you to go in and and, and um, systematically begin to fill in the information about uh, all the screening information that's going on around this volunteer so the informed can and as they start to get completed you'll see that they will be color coded so they're red when it's not when the entire visit is not completed green indicates that the individual uh, event is completed, so I did my informed consent, my vitals were done. I still need to do urine collection, safety lab, and physical exam. So let's just show you um, an example of just what, what the screen might look like. So this is just collecting urine. So at this point, obviously we're not all together. If we were together doing this presentation, I'd have a scanner with me, all the labels laid out, and we'd be doing everything via barcode scanning. Everything within LabPass is really designed to be done via the labeling. Um, you know, it really is designed to minimize, based on, you know, the clinics and, and how much work's going on, how, how time-consuming and time-sensitive the this data is, everything is designed to be set up so that as much information can be barcoded as possible. Another point I wanted to make out on this, as you can see, it completes it now. This is green. Another thing I wanted to point out was um, at any point in time, you could take a note on that volunteer. So the communication with the volunteer, now we're in the screening phase, communication with that volunteer can be captured and kept throughout the life, and that could be a continual uh, history of, of communication with the volunteer. So maybe they're allergic to citrus, you know, this is important to know, uh, you know, especially if they're going to be drinking, you know, there's going to be juices during, the, during their stay in the clinic. And you'll see that that note will stay here. So at any point in time, you'll know that there's notes associated with this volunteer. And it allows you to really just go through rapidly and fill in the information and, you know, allow all that screening information to be captured in a very logical fashion. Also supports capabilities so that uh, you can take vitals before you've done informed consent. You know, that logic can all be set up within LabPass. So I'm going to go back up here to the studies. It's called SR Studies. And we're going to just take a look at that, that study again. And we're going to go over to the Volunteers tab here. And you're going to see there's a bunch of different volunteers that are in different uh, phases of the process. So what LabPass allows you to do, what LabPass allows you to do is go in here and take a review of that volunteer. So this is designed for the PI. So if I go here and I hit review, this screen here, this eligibility review screen allows me to go in as the PI, as the, as the primary investigator of the clinic. So now you're dealing with the physician or the um, whoever's running the clinic. They can take a look at this individual. They can see what status that they're in and they can move that individual through the process. Now, each one of these statuses all have business rules that, uh, you know, obviously with the time we have available, I, you know, don't have the time to go into the details around them, but they allow the logical routing of a volunteer. So maybe they screen failed, maybe they were approved, maybe they were accepted into the trial. So at this point, if they say approved or accepted, they can also go up here and take a look at eligibility completed. So the eligibility completed allows you to 
allows the PI to go in and take a look at the whether they feel, based on all the information that they've captured, was this person ready to say that their review is completed. They've done the review and now they want to sign off on this. You'll also see in LabPass a number of the screens have these approvals at the bottom. Again, it's fully regulatory compliant in terms of what is needed for our industry to make sure that the data obviously is at the highest quality that it can be. So, I mean, the two biggest things is obviously the quality, but also the speed of the data. And I think LabPass really accomplishes both. It doesn't sacrifice any quality for speed, and, and it allows the speed to be much more significant in terms of other tools that are on the market in this space. But again, these are all the eligibility review questions. So here the PI, you know, based on the protocol, they can start looking at these, they can start figuring out yes, no, any comments, um, what is any review history, was there any study questions? And then they could say, you know what, uh, and they also get a snapshot up here of where is everything at in the process? Have the labs been approved? Has the, has the screening data been approved? So all that logical uh, is designed logically to be, you know, set up in a process that it then can have them make a, a decision to approve them into the trial. So I'm going to just say complete it, and I'm just, just to show you some examples of it, and, uh, and I'm going to enter the user ID and password. I hit save. Now again, LabPass, it's not going to stop you, but what it's going to do is it's designed for phase one. I mean, it knows you haven't completed all your screening data. Do you still want to say that the eligibility review is completed? I'm going to say okay because we're just doing a demo today. And I'm going to just say okay. So that's just a, a quick example from the recruiting and screening side on how you bring a volunteer in, you schedule them for an appointment, you uh, then screen them, you fill out their screening, and then when you reach a logical uh, place in, in the process, the physician will go in and, you know, say that eligibility review is completed. And what this will do is take a snapshot of all the data that's been captured around that volunteer and push it over to the trial. Now, they're not a subject yet. They're still just a candidate in the trial, and they're not going to be a subject until they're dosed. But all that information will be captured so that we'll, we'll know the entire history on that volunteer. So I'm going to move from here to now what's called just a couple other features in LabPass before we go over to the trial side. It also supports a lot of things around clinical operations. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the time to go into in a lot of detail. But what it allows me to do is set up things like a clinic schedule. So I can start to take a look at things and, and, and set up a schedule or staff assignments. All that are pieces within LabPass. It lets you go into a thing such as a staff assignment, and you can go in here and say, you know what, um, I want to assign just this dose out to a particular user in my clinic. You know, I, I want to make sure that just the dosages and the, and the blood draws are being done here. You know, and I can go up and I can start to assign them. You know, I can give them a clinic, or a, and a clinic is a, a specific location within the CPU. So if I wanted to assign it, I could start looking at it, and I can add what's called work shifts. And this allows to specifically set up work shifts so that you can start to build a full clinical operational schedule in a, in a, in a swim lean type of fashion, let you go through and say that I know I need three of my nurses on this part of the floor for study XYZ to do the blood, the blood collection and all the vitals, and I, need, I, I know I need people over here to support meals that are going on for this particular trial. So it allows you to build all those things that you were probably doing on X, maybe with Excel or just with regular paper can now all be built into LabPass with this work shift capability, and it allows you to go in and just add a work shift, I'm going to end, let, let you save it, and then I'll let you go through, and, and it'll, it'll give you a snapshot of it, and then I'll let you go through and actually let you go into the staffing here and assign it to specific users. So you can assign it to a user, hit save, and now you go in and you can actually go in and take a little snapshot of the schedule, and you can see that these events right here these dose and 15-minute PK are assigned to this study, 
in this in this work stream under this under this study, and we'll build all these studies across the top. But I'm, at, I'm now going to move over to what's called CT studies, and what I'm going to do here is take that volunteer, take a volunteer. We're going to schedule them. We're going to do a couple couple data capture just so you can get a feel for how it looks, and uh, send them through a couple things in the sample management workflow. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm in this study here, and I'm going to go over to events. And I'm going to schedule events. Now, obviously, in the real world, all these events are scheduled and ready to go. But, you know, for the fun part of the demo, we try to make it as close to, to real time as we can make it and, and see how, how close we can get it, So, at least from, from the dosing perspective. So I'm going to schedule. So right now, my clinic is set up on the, the east coast of the United States. Um, so I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to put in a new time here, say 1040 with a five-minute offset. And I'm going to apply it. And that's okay. That's just talking about the scheduling. Uh, you know, as, you, as you're setting up the clinic scheduling, it's going to clear what we did earlier. I'm going to just say okay. And then I'm going to go up here to this event schedule button up here at the top. And you can see the screen looks a little bit different now because it's really designed for the tablet. At this point, I'm doing this off my laptop, but at this point, you're, you're thinking about in the real world what's going on. The tablet is assigned, you know, is assigned to a, a nurse or a group of nurses. They're going around the floor. The tablet is mobile. It's probably attached to a, maybe a vital, maybe to a, a vital uh, wheel stand. You know, they're wheeling that around along with it, with you know, all the other stuff that they're dealing, going through, and then they're entering the information directly at at bedside. So I'm going to just go here and I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to do a couple events in the interest of time, just so you can get a feel for it. So I'm going to actually say, uh, you know what, let's let's dose. So let's take a dose for for this individual. Now again, you know, as I had mentioned, you know, you, we would be doing this via um, a barcode scanner in the real world. Um, this is uh, right now. I'm just typing it in, and as you can see, it, it brings up the clock. Now, uh, obviously, I'm early in the game here—15 um, minutes before they should really be dosed. But everything is scheduled. Everything is managed. Everything is moved appropriately. If those slips, so do the other events. They move logically. You can also restrict events. So certain events can't be moved. Um, but the way the, the way the protocol is set up, obviously, if you're, if you're late two minutes, everything can be moved two minutes further downstream. So we're not going to wait for this to, to finish out. I just want to show you the clock, to, how it does appear. What it also allows you to do is it's counting down to zero. It'll, it'll beep to alert the end user that they need to take that event, whether it be dose or blood draw or whatever it is. So I'm going to just select that. And then if I go to hit save, again, you're going to get stuff like this. LabPass is out of the box has hundreds of out of the box checks, out of the box checks around how phase one clinics need to operate. In this case, this is a classic deviation. Um, obviously, I set the tolerance at zero. I should have given myself a little bit of tolerance, but it's at zero, meaning that I have to do it at the time of the event is scheduled. So I'm going to just say uh, I can key in it in a comment here, but LabPass also supports, as I had mentioned, about everything can be labeled. You know, there could be things you can have what's called pre-configured comments. So these are just examples of pre-configured comments. And so what you could do is say there's five standard things that you know, you know could cause a deviation. They can be set up as comments and then put on a little barcode, you know, on a little index card, and they just scan them just like they would anything else. They don't have to key this comment in each time. You could have a pre-configured comment. So I'm going to hit Save here. And what that does is I just dosed, you know, I just dosed the patient. 
I'm going to actually just do, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the 15-minute PK, and I'm going to do the 30-minute PK safety. So what, what this is allowing me to do here is a compound draw. So I, I can now go in here and take both the safety labs and the PK draw simultaneously. Again, that's an example of, so if I put something in and I say 1Y, it knows what vessel code is associated with that event. So 1Y is not associated with that, but 1I is. And that, that'll allow me to, you know, again, managing all those barcodes. And you think about in the clinic doing this all on paper, how difficult it is to manage all of it. Again, timer comes up, also supports things like push button integration. So you could just push a button if you're a phlebotomist, you're actually doing a blood draw now. You may not have hands free to even click, you know, you can hit a push button on the floor that will automatically click the clock into the system so that you know the time. So that's when I just change it. Maybe you know, maybe it was a hard stick, so we had a little harder time getting this guy's, uh, this individual's blood taken. And I'm going to save that. So just a couple examples of you know capturing the data on the clinic floor, and then you know a couple. Just the other thing you know obviously could be going on is you could have examples here. Uh, there could be some observations going on. Maybe there's a new event. Uh, there could be just an event going on on the floor. Maybe somebody, maybe this volunteer requested a uh, a blanket. Now seems insignificant, but you know could mean something if 30 minutes later they're they're running a fever, right? You just want to see a history around just anything that might be going on the, on within the thing within the unit and set that up here. Jump away from that. And then obviously the same thing with, with the AE observations. Any AE observations can be captured here. So I'm going to actually jump. We've taken that blood work. Now I want to take, just show you an example of how that can flow through the sample management component of lab pass. So again, everything is, is logically broken up based, based on what process you're in, in within here. So if I go to sample management, maybe I want to log that blood work first, then I want to send it to the out, I want to uh, send it to the centrifuge, I want to aliquot it, I want to store it. So I want to go through these logical processes, you know, all the way to shipping, to packing, to freezing. Can, lab pass can go down to the row and rack level within the freezer. Everything is barcode labeled, centrifuges labeled, the freezers are labeled. But um, let's just take a few examples of the sample management screens. So here at this point, if you think about what's, what's, kind of, what's going on within the clinic, we're, we're basically handling, handing over chain of custody at this point from the clinic floor to the lab within the clinic. Again, um, you know, at this point, we're giving them that information, handing over that information to them. So I've handed it over to the lab. Then the lab's going to go in here, and they're going to go to centrifuge. And again, these could all be links across the top, depending on your role within the clinic. If you're the lab tech, you may only see the sample management workflow items across the top. So now I want to centrifuge it. Here's a, here's a good example of understanding the barcode labels. So LabPass knows that the barcode label, one of the labels, this is the compound draw that we did previously, one of the labels is for PK, one of the labels is for safety. Well, we're not going to do the centrifuge 
for the safety, we're going to send that. Obviously, that's going to go out to the external lab, and we're going to import that information back from the external lab. We also support things like such as HL7 with the external labs. So I'm going to just cancel that, and we're going to just keep it at the one I barcode. I had mentioned you, you can also have the label on the centrifuge. So the label, the centrifuge has been labeled 1i. We, we've saved that, and that captures all the information around the centrifuge. And all this is in the setup of lab pass. Obviously, we don't have the time to do that for today, um, but you know, obviously, be happy to do it at, at a, you know a, a subsequent meeting. But we would show you where we set up all this information in the lab pass system. So I'm going to hit save on that. And now I'm going to just go into aliquoting. And as you can see, the screens start to look, you know, are consistent on how they work. This is two aliquots because this is what we set, set it up as. And we hit save. And then I guess from a, from a sample management just for today, we'll just stop it. Why don't we just take it to storage? So we we've we've went from centrifuge, we went to aliquoting uh, for this one barcode sample. Uh, and let's just take it to the freezer and and we'll and we'll keep it. You know, we'll end it at that. But again, pull, uh, there's also pulling, uh, shipping, packing, all that are part of the of the workflow sample management piece of LabPass. So at this point, we're just taking those two aliquots that we set up, and we're going to uh, freeze them in, in the, in the, put them in the freezer. And again, the the barcode would be on the freezer, can be on the shelves. You know, it, it can get down to that level of the samples. That's sample management. Um, you know, we took obviously it's a very high level overview, so we're only taking one sample, but we can get as sophisticated as need. We, you know, we had an example just a few weeks back. They wanted us to do it with 11 aliquots. So how do we, you know, how do we handle 11 aliquots uh, off the sample? Um, you know, we took PD. We could, you know, show how we set up PDs and things like that also within LabPass. So the next piece I wanted to show you and, and spend a little bit of time in is the is just you know at a high level is the data management. So if we go back into studies, at any point in time you can keep this screen on the left here open if you want to know you know what section you need to reference, or you can you, know, you just ping it and it stays open throughout, or you can close it. But we're going to go back into uh, the studies here. And we're going to go over to the events. And if you click data here, obviously we don't have a lot of data, uh, you know, in the, in what we're doing today, but we have a few. You know, we have a couple pieces of data. So in group A, we have uh, dose, clinical testing, PK testing. That's what we just did off this subject 102. These are the vessel barcodes. And you can go in and see, you know, what is the status? Has it been completed? Is it in progress? So we see that the PK testing has been completed. Safety obviously is in progress. Who reviewed it? Who reviewed it by? What review date? These are all the data management capabilities that are part of out-of-the-box features of LabPass. Was it clinically significant? You can see all that information in this section here. Likewise, if you go over to the samples, it's the same same idea. You can go in and see. Well, you know what? Let's let's see if there's any if there's any aliquot or if there's any boxes. You'd see that all within here.
One thing that LabPass will have is what you saw there. That screen was empty at first because of the what the what the way it was filtered. Every lab every LabPass screen, you'll see this filter capability, and what this allows you to do is to just bring back the data on the screen that you really want to be working with. So in this case, you know, it was set at uh, Group One, which is what we're working with, Group A, Period One. Um, at any point, you just click a filter button. You can go in and enter very sophisticated um, subset of data based on these filtering screens. And, and you'll see this basically on every screen in LabPass. We'll have a filter button to let you bring back the subset of data. As the data starts to build, you know, you can bring back just the data that you're working with. But just a couple points on this. So now we're at the aliquots. You'll see that, you know, where they came in, when they were created, their storage date, what was their aliquot storage date. Same thing if with you know on the samples, you know, would be the same thing with the samples. Expected time, sample date time, date received, when it went into the centrifuge, when it came out of the centrifuge, you can set uh, alerting, so you can set, you know, it can only be in the in the centrifuge for 10 minutes, and if it's not, if it's over that, you get alerts. You can set all that up within LabPass. Also, from a data management perspective, is this metrics button here, and what this allows me to do is get a snapshot of a group, what's going on within the groups. Um, you know, what is, the, what is the percentage that's been completed, what's been under data review, data approval, um, you know, what labs have been approved, what AEs have been handled, all that is in this section here. All, all that can be put here. And then you can release that data. And what, when, you, when you're logically ready, it's been cleaned to the point that you, you feel it's reviewable by the sponsor as long you know, you can release that and then they can see that data and, and base, you know, and take a look at it and review it. The other piece I wanted to show you around data management is uh, the concept of uh, just raising a query. So, uh, you know, a data point back that you, you want to, you know, ask the clinic about. So within LabPass, going to go into this into an area called DQ. Now it's set up this way because it, it's basically part of LabPass, but it is a different URL and it's designed that way so that you can grant external sponsors, users to just the DQ system of LabPass so that they can see uh, and review the data. And what LabPass DQ allows you to do is give you a tree type view into the data. So you get a tree type look into all the data in the data point. So we've been working primarily with this subject 102. Uh, you know, obviously we're just doing very high level stuff today. But you can go in and take a look at the subject you can click on anything and see all the data points that were captured. And then you can raise a query back, uh, you know, if needed around that data. So, you know, you might have been, this, you know, 30 minute PK. Uh, you know, uh, what was the comma? It was a hard stick. You know, you can, so it could be raising it specifically around a data point or just a collaboration back to the, to the clinic. You know, uh, you know, I have a question around that, you know, was this, was this vital information? Is, is this stuff, you know, really in line with what we expected? But, you know, just for the interest of today, and let's just do, just to show you how it works, uh, you know, you can take a look at this hard stick. You can just query back to the clinic and say, you know, you know what was the issue, the issue with getting the blood? Maybe you need to understand what's going on with this volunteer. Perhaps, you know, if you think about it, perhaps they're, you know, having a rash, right? So you need to understand, you know, is that going to be related to this hard stick or not? So you just hit save here. And then that creates this open query thing. 
open query information around the top here. And then you also have this change log, and this keeps the audit trail of all the data that's being potentially changed within the system. So if I go back into LabPass and I go up to queries, you'll see that comment. So that's real time. So I mean, you know, it's a real time interaction with the sponsor or, you know, internally within the CRO, depending on how you want to use DQ, but allows them to look at the data, react to the data in real time, ask questions to the clinic, have the clinic look at this, make, you know, make additional data point changes or just answer questions as needed. Um, so you see that this open query is here at the 30 minute safety time point. You know, and this is just really, um, you know, this one's just, you know, what was the issue here? Above was an example of, uh, you know, making a change to the vitals. So I'm gonna hit answer. So I could say it was a data change, or maybe in this case it's not a data change, it's really an, an inquiry, you know, and it could say issues with veins. And save. So then you see that that was answered. If you go back up into the DQ module, and go here, you'll see that you'll see the issue resolved in real time. So um, it allows, you know, a real time interaction between you know, the sponsors or whoever's overseeing the, the, the running of this with the clinic. So you get much more quicker turnaround time around the data cleanliness, the quality of the data, you know, again, the two biggest things that we hear is quality and speed. I mean, that's really, you know, it's not unique to any of the other phases, but phase one obviously has different components that are just so completely different from phase two and three and four that the timing is just, you know, much shorter. You know, you have to have these systems set up in a day or two, not weeks. And LabPass is designed to set up all your events rapidly. So, you know, get a protocol, have it set up, you know, within within two days, you have that system up and running in LabPass, and it's designed specifically to meet that phase one requirement. So with that, I, I think there's about seven minutes left, and that's what I wanted to present today in terms of a high-level overview. We'd be happy to uh, spend a more detailed time with, with folks, uh, you know, when you're ready. Um, but as you can see, there's, you know, at this point, I'm really just scratching the surface on the capabilities of this product. There's, a, there's many, many things that it can do uh, that really add value to, you know, when you think about what you do today in, in your clinic and, you know, what you struggle with and how automation could potentially help you with that. So thank you. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Ed and Padam. Before we move on to the Q&A session, I just want to remind everyone that you can ask questions via the chat feature located on the left side of your screen. Uh, we'll try to answer as many questions as time allows. Um, so we'll give it another um, 30 seconds or so for some questions, and then we'll go ahead and answer them. So as um, we get them in, um, I'll just begin asking them. So the first question is, can you use notes when the study is started as well because you were on the SR side of lab pass, not the CT side? As of today, the notes features on the, on the SR side of it. Great, thank you. That, that was the only question as of right now. We'll but just one point, and yeah, there is the comments, uh, you know, on each of the screens when, when you're in the, just to, to elaborate a little further on that, on the data entry uh, screens for, for a particular volunteer, there's comments, and obviously you can expand. What I was showing today was just, you know, putting in pre-configured comments. You can add additional comments based on what's going on with that, 
about that car that subject at that particular time. Okay, um, if you don't mind, Ed, if you can go back and show the uh, comments again as data, that would be great. Sure, let me just go back. So if I go, if I go back up to the event schedule and just say I'm in here, at this point, what comments allows you to do is you, this first box. Oh, you have to, I think oh. you have to share your screen. Okay, sorry. So I'm sharing this. The, you should see the screen now. Um, yep. So say for example that you know there's something going on with this particular volunteer at this point in time. You, you can add these comments. This is this first box here is, is really designed for pre-configured. So you set up five or six comments you always want to use, and boom, it'll, it'll show up for you. So you don't have to type that in. But this is also a free form box. So at this point, you can add in additional notes about this particular subject because right now this is tied to subject number 102 and screening number DDD. So this is a unique candidate or subject within, within the clinic. So uh, individual is experiencing, you know, uh, uh, issues with, issues with um, blood draws. Right, so that's that's not a that's not a necessarily a a um, an adverse event, but if you think about make maybe your next event is uh, a vitals, right? So the vitals is a little spiked, or the vitals is you know not what you expect. So there, there's a little apprehension going on here with this volunteer around being a little needle adverse, I guess. Um, so the comments allows you to attach detailed, more detailed information uh, around the volunteer. I keep calling them volunteer at this point, it's really a, it's a subject. So when they're in the CT side, we're subjects now, we're not volunteers. Once they're dosed, they're a subject. So would you like me to go back in the screening field with the note was created to see if it's again an SR? So the SR note would be if I go back into screening and I select that individual. This is me earlier. You see that note that's there. Okay, so the notes are there. Um, the note from the comment is not going to be sitting here on the screening page if that was what the question was. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the question I think is where the notes, the notes are here within the screening. I know they are looking at how they incorporate all the additional notes, you know, from the uh, CT side, what we call the CT side. One of the things I haven't, I try to stay away from, but lab pass is a really, uh, you know, module. It's, it's subject recruitment. We call that SR sometimes and, and then clinical trial CT. Uh, so when we're talking about it. But one thing I should point out too is if I go back, let me just go to the, C, the CT studies real quick. I know we're running short on time here. Um, but just to show you this over here under the participants, it's not going to show a lot because I didn't really um, have a lot of information about this person yet. But if you go back to the candidates and I go into the individual, I just want to show you that this side over here, obviously there's not a lot, but this is where all the screening data came over, all the screening tests came over, all that information. Obviously, the, you know, none of the safety labs are back yet, but you'll see all that screening data and all those screening tests come over into the CT side when I accept them as eligibility completed. Great. Um, so, so what other question that we had? Uh, let me go back to that question. What systems have you directly interfaced with to capture data? For example, balance, et cetera. Yeah, we have a list. I mean, right now, um, 
we, we do Welsh, from a from a device perspective, we have Welsh Allen, MedTox. Um, there's about six that I can provide. Uh, I just have to confirm, you know, where we are in terms of completion with them. Some of them are completed. Some of them are, are still being in the process of being completed. Um, balance, I, I, I refer to a weight scale, I, I assume. I, I'm not sure if I understand what a balance, but that there is a there is a list of ones that we've completed, you know, that we'd be happy to share, uh, you know, share with the folks on the call. Um, I just need to confirm. I don't want to say this is completed if it's still, you know, two months from completion. So uh, there's about six different integration types that we're currently work, you know, currently have completed or in the process of working on. And then obviously we're looking at new ones all the time, but it really depends on demand and, and uh, you know, the clients, you know, are going to drive that. Great. And he was referring to um, scales and other clinical instruments, so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like we have used up the lot of time we've had for this webinar, so that will end our uh, short Q&A session. Uh, if you do have other questions, feel free to contact um, us directly. Uh, once again, today's webinar will be available on biofarm.com within 24 hours for you to review and share with your colleagues. We thank you for your participation and hope that the information we provided you today was helpful. Um, if you have any additional questions, once again, feel free to reach out to uh, Biofarm and Oracle directly. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a great rest of the day and evening.